Uh, I'm Professor Enrique Soriano. I'm a family business coach. Uh, I uh, do work here in the Philippines and in overseas, mostly in Southeast Asia. I am a book author and I have been doing a lot of family business coaching for, for more than a decade now and helping family-owned businesses transition from uh, a very informal family-run business to a more formal and institutionalized way of growing the business. So, as mentioned, I'm, I'm a book author. I, I, I wrote uh, uh, a couple of books that talks about uh, ensuring the family business legacy and a compilation of uh, most of my articles that I've written through the years. Uh, what does this book actually uh, tell us? Well, it's a self-help book uh, for business owners to guide them in their quest for uh, longevity. It's also a guide for founders uh, to make them feel that uh, they can actually create a legacy for their respective businesses that they they created from nothing. So, so this book will be an enabler for business owners and a beacon and a guide so that uh, at some point in the future when when they feel all is lost because their children are not active, they're not passionate, they're not committed, or they're simply entitled, this could be a handy guide. But more importantly, uh, I'm here because it's an advocacy. My advocacy is to really help uh, family-owned businesses, big and small, to last for 100 years and more. And that has been my passion for, for the most part. I'm helping several family-owned businesses uh, transition from being a 50-year-old to becoming 100-year-old. So hopefully in due time, uh, I'd be able to reach as many uh, business owners to shed light on the importance of stewardship and governance. And because those are the two key elements in, in my craft as a business uh, advisor and coach for family-owned businesses in Asia. Sir, you created the, a lot of uh, business tycoons already. And uh, um, nakikita ko po na mukhang malaking maitutulong nyo para sa pag-ulad ng ating ekonomiya sa ating bansa. Yes. Uh, may mga research, uh, I mean, may, may libro na kayo na it will serve as a research work po rinyo. Mm -hmm. Not just a research, but it's already your experience for the past three decades. Yeah. And uh, are you... Uh, uh, in, um, do you like or if there is an opportunity to be part of the National Research Council of the Philippines, uh, would you think that uh, you will uh, no, grab the opportunity to help the country, to help the president? Uh, salamat, Kathy, no, sa pag uh, I've always been an advocate for governance, not just on family-owned businesses. Uh, I... I I almost, but I was not able to complete my doctorate at the National College of Public Administration, the UP. Uh, because of work commitment, I was not able to complete my my doctorate. But uh, given the opportunity to to change the, you know, and and to advocate for for corporate good governance in in this administration, I would love to. Uh, of course, subject to my availability because half of the month, I'm always out of the country. But uh, being a resource uh, based on my experience, uh, remember, I, I many years ago, 30, 25 years ago, I used to be a consultant of the Civil Service Commission uh, at the time by uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Alma Jose. Alma de Leon, I'm sorry. Alma de Leon. Yes, kay Cora. Oh, the secret weapon of Alma de <laughs> So, because we were together in the academe, at some point she invited me to train the commissioners and the directors. So, it was a wonderful event for me because I was able to walk my talk and share good governance. During the time that uh, Alma de Leon was the uh, uh, commission, commission. chairman, chairman of the, chairperson, yeah. uh, the chairperson of the Civil Service Commission, I was a government employee. Oh. You know, I've been in the government for Prior to my uh, being a media person, Galing. so actually, uh, uh, 
Chairman uh, De Leon is one of the, I think, the only one that really helps a lot uh, or what should I say, um, talagang magaling siya, excellent ang kanya ginawa, so you're the one. <laughs> ano lang ako? Tulong ng konti, but, but to reinforce that also, aside from uh, Cora's uh, administration then, she's very authentic and a purist, no? I also at some point was stopped by uh, the the uh, Immigration Commission. At the time, they had problems during uh, uh, Pinoy's time, uh, during the, long, the, 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 the hosting of the World Economic Forum. There was a lot of problems at the airport. So Commissioner Fred Bison, who was my co-professor at the Ateneo Professional Schools, he was teaching in the law school. I was teaching in the business school. We were just one floor apart. One time approached me. Can you help me? So I did intervention. Decongesting the airport. Yes, yes. And you know what? I brought my students to help me prepare a service blueprint. And it paved the way for for a, a bit of a decongestion at before the World Economic Forum. Kasi mapapaya ang buong Pilipinas. Ang dami kasi nagreklamo eh. So I was there at the front line for several weeks. Manning and helping out the immigration officers. And if you notice, in you know, to, to give credit to Fred Misson and his team, including the Department of Transportation, that's also the reason why most of the big airports moved to Terminal 3. And again, in fairness, and to give credit to Fred Misson, wala nang pagdating mo, wala nang arrival card. So, so they re- revolutionized that, and, and I, I had a small part there, at least on putting and tr- creating management in the way the airport, our airport, was uh, be, was 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 accommodating passengers arriving from long flights. You are indeed have a great idea. So, well, message to our public, to Filipino people. If, if you if you want one more during the time of era uh, my credentials was also sent to him uh, to help sana chair the MMDA but of course uh, but unfortunately uh, they chose politicians over, uh, over an academic or administrators a- like like oh. us now because I was passionate in declogging heads of traffic then but but again as I've said so um, at this time at this moment uh, what do you think will be the solution to this uh, heavy traffic elsewhere especially in heads of oh oh at do this for, for desperate times like this you, you need to be draconian. You need to really impose your will. You need to be very decisive. This is no time to play uh, politics among the mayors. There has got to be a powerful, decisive traffic model to do whatever it takes to mitigate this traffic. You cannot eradicate this totally. But at the very least, if you can cut travel time by 30%, you're on your way because of all the infrastructure developments that are happening. But discipline and without fear or favor is something that must be done now, not later. So for me, being decisive, being draconian, no politics here, just do your job. For me, as I mentioned earlier in my talk, you only need one year. And if you can't deliver, you'll be ready to step down. And you don't stay in power for the sake of staying in power. So yes, I I am inspired. But of course, uh, I also pay bills. So I need to make a living uh, based on my current craft. But I'm more than willing to help this administration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much.